to the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, November 7th, 2017. Would you please uh, join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like a motion to ratify um, some warrants. The first one is a payroll warrant from 10-24-17 for $163,403.23. And another one, an expense warrant for 10-24-17 for $85,613.51. An approved expense warrant for 10 31 17 for $97,007.91. And another expense warrant for 11 7 17 for $353,231.93. You have that motion. Second. All, any discussion or any of these? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. And then we'd like to approve, uh, ratify, and approve some Sotman's minutes of 9 5 17 and 10 18 17. Do you have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a move, approve monthly reports and minutes from other departments, EMS monthly report for October 2017, and the advisory board committee meeting from 10 12 17. Do you have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have some announcements. Um, the highway department has announced that the leaves will be picked up in the village district of the town the week of November 20th. And then also, the highway department is moving forward to replace current street lights with LED fixtures. And we'll have more to follow on that. And then we have a reminder that a winter parking ban is in effect in Brookfield from November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 10, 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. There will be no parking on streets, whether or not snowed is predicted. Anyone in violation is subject to a $25 fine. And now we're gonna open up for our public access. Does anyone have anything for our public access this evening? Yeah. Okay. For you, uh, you're on our agenda. That's okay. Yeah, but that's this is something different. Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, kind of let the public know that in the past we've had a, a senior and a veteran work off program. We've had two slots in each where people can work off their property mm -hmm. um, taxes, and we will be it'll be there'll be an announcement in the next uh, issue of the Citizen explaining that we're opening it up for um, the 2018 year, and I just want everybody to know. And, um, we will have applications at the assessor's office when people want to, whenever they want to come in. So I had a new clerk, Patty, who's working out tremendous. Um, I had her do a little study with all the local towns. So I just wanted to give you guys the results of where we stack up. Do you need a copy too, Karen? <coughs> No, I can get okay. it. Yeah, just I get another one, Karen, if you need one. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go, Punk. Oh, thanks. Um, the only two towns around that do not do it, participate in anything, is uh, North and West Brookfield. Uh, other than that, they're anywhere from we uh, we fund it for two thousand dollars, all the way up to um, thirty thousand dollars in a couple of communities. So we are on the low end of the spectrum. Uh, compared to everybody else, so I think we need to kind of see how many, see what the interest level is, and then going forward, see if we can't do a little something more. So we have what four? We have two veteran and two senior slots. So all together we have four. All together we have four. Together. Some towns just say, okay, we have 20 <clears throat> slots, and it could be senior or veteran. Yeah. And, and then I they see can. That in like bad. I think that's a better way to go mm -hmm. forward. Um, so I want to look at look at the whole program and then sit down and we'll figure out what's best um, going forward for the town. That sounds good. 
Okay. okay. I just want to let everybody know that. So, well, any questions? And while we're here, because of the success of the program, because of a certain experience by an individual, tens of thousands of dollars were were saved by the town because Correct. we don't have to go out and buy an emergency generator or two. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I think I mean we we've, we've had tremendous success, and where we could find that kind of experience again, if it's out there. And we would encourage it. And I think one of the biggest challenges initially was people getting used to the program. One thing I think, um, I'd love to have you gauge the level of interest. What I'd also like to do is take a look at being a little bit more welcoming with regards to who it's open to. Because mm -hmm. I think when the what program, did you say, Beth, a little more welcoming with regards to who it's open to. Uh, because I know of somebody who in the first year that we had it tried to apply but because they'd only been a resident of the town for a year or 18 months even though they were a fairly substantive property owner we didn't actually allow them to participate in the senior portion of the program so as you're taking in applications even if people don't meet the time requirements I'd like to understand how many people fall into that category of perhaps being newer in town that would be eligible other than that requirement but Beth if I understand that's right in the that's right in the law where it's concerned you have to be a resident at least for five years in the community for exemptions yeah. that's true I this is a town no, run for this program one, though, so I'm think not you sure have to. I think you have to be in it I think you have to have at least five years residency in the community is that in you know, mass general law is that our policy <coughs> I'll, I'll find that out Beth because yeah, we have to do more but, research but on it remember that when they had only been here in town a year on that one and we refused to because we did have a policy that I'm pretty sure was the five years that they had. Yeah, I haven't seen anything other than under the exemptions yeah. which are there in part funded well, by I'm, the state. I'm sure that there is something on that because Probably. that is why we did refuse that person. I remember that. There are also the majority of the towns set thresholds, income thresholds, mm -hmm. and whether it's yeah. uh, individual or um, it could also be a couple yeah. and if you're above that and they're all over they range all over the place with that and I think it probably comes down to the, the percentage of seniors that are in a community yeah, and so we'd almost want to get into a stuff we get to that yeah. point you actually really want to know like Holland has a huge uh, number of seniors whereas most of the other towns around are, are more you know but until you have the data it's hard to really make a decision yeah. on that so stuff if you look at all those pieces that would be great Right now, I can tell you that we have a lot of people coming in and saying, and I say, geez, well, all the slots are filled, sorry. Okay. And they've been filled since, you know, for the seniors, for those two slots have been filled since January last year. Right. So I, I know, know that there's a lot of when interest. We, when we first started this program, we, we didn't have anybody that was interested, so we had to go back into town meeting. We had to reaccept it all over again. And then we did, but, and I have to say the seniors that we have had in here, they have been tremendous help to the town. Absolutely. They helped out with <clears throat> filing and what they haven't done. And I know we have, we've had some that have mowed lawns and it is a tremendous help to the so town. So uh, what I'm here. putting together is an application and okay. it'll be multiple pages. Um, they will have to, if we decide that we want to go with a, um, income an income threshold, yep. they would have to show the front page of their income tax return. The most recent but one. Isn't that in along with the with the? We'd have to. When look you, up the exemptions, you're supposed to show that. I think you should. It falls. I, I don't know what chapter it falls under, but it's a certain chapter under Mass General Law, and I know we had to accept it at town meeting. But everybody, every town has their own spin on it. There are no Thank two you. out of all of them we looked at that are okay. the same. Okay. They have different income thresholds. Um, some of them even are based on how many people are living in the house, up to eight people. Um, well, so why don't you do a sort you know, find out and then... Well, I want to kind of gauge the interest, yeah. but I don't want to put a lot of time into this yeah. only to find out, hey, there's only yeah, four no, people that are interested. So go ahead, let's, so. Get, let's get the interest first, and then if we need to yeah. go back and retool the program in order to align needs of the town with the interest level of people, let's do that. And then on the application will be a section that says, what are your qualifications? Yeah. And if somebody comes in and... They can, you know, rebuild a pickup truck, and it's gonna. We're gonna give them five hundred dollars for forty-five hours, and we end up with a five thousand dollar vehicle. Obviously, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, right. Sure. Um, you know, so it, so they it won't just be on okay the income thing. It has yep. to be Everything. weighted. So what's best yeah. for the town? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. At any point, let me know if you get questions. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the information, and thank you, clerk. And that's her name is. Um, no, you're 
No. Who? Clerk. The clerk. Patty. 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 Annette worked for a little while, too, okay. but she oh, was okay. one of the senior work off people. Oh, okay. Got uh, it. All right. She got all the names. You're doing good. Do we have anybody else for public access this evening? Mr. Holbrook? I guess it's my turn, huh? So, Linda, you weren't here last time, the last meeting we had, and I had a, I want to give you an update. We discussed about the Verizon bills that you say that, that you and your other two selectmen are saying that I owe the town. So, I do not owe the Verizon bills. And also, you said Clarence made the remark that I did not plant five trees. And I told Clarence that, that the trees were planted. So, I'll make sure you, I don't know if they conveyed that to you. And, and, no, you know. we have. We didn't talk about oh, it. Okay. No, we haven't met since. So. We haven't met right. since. We did meet. Yes, we did meet that's with that's why I'm. Actually we did meet with an executive session a couple of weeks ago, but we didn't discuss this. Okay. So, so that's. I just wanted to give you an update that that's. You know, I'm not going to pay the Verizon bills. Okay. And you know, on a on a different note. I moved that house. I saved the town fifteen thousand. So let's even. I don't know the. the, the I think it's twelve hundred bucks. On another note, the way you're grinding me, I saved the town about fifteen thousand for moving that house. So I think you should, you know, have a little, little bit of appreciation in the idea. You know? right. My understanding, Dave, when we first heard about, you know, how this with the elect, with the bill with Verizon, uh -huh. that um, there was an agreement that you were supposed to pay. The, the, the officers that did the duty. And um, then I, I did some investigating on it and come to find out that the police paid it. The police department paid it out of their budget. And it was out of, um, I forgot what, but it was the um, detailed budget. And it shouldn't, account, yeah. it was, it shouldn't <clears throat> come out of that account. You had, a, my understanding was that you agreed to pay these officers. No, that was there was no no that that's totally totally false, Linda. I never made any statement. The Verizon paid North Brookfield detail the same day. They were there for the wires being down. There's a state law. If you look it up yourself, you can find a state law that they the utility companies have to move wires. They do not own the air rights in the state of Mass now. Okay, they paid they paid North Brookfield details the same day. <clears throat> well, they didn't pay the Brookfield details because I yes, know I know that's why the so police nice. department paid. Yes, paid out of the detail. Out of the detail. Yes, money. I'm quite aware of that. I understand that I was on the finance board. I know and, all and, about and that. I have the number now. With your permission, uh, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, um, I'll reach out to uh, Ellen Cummings from Verizon, who stated that they never agreed to pay <clears throat> that and that. Um, they are not the ones who are responsible, that it's their practice for anyone who's doing a house move to pay for the details for the house. No, let me let me, let me set you so, straight. Let me well, set you straight. Though. All I'm doing is reading what the lady from Verizon I know. sent Holly. The, the Verizon spent three weeks up here moving wires. They had details all over the place for three weeks. And guess who paid those details? Verizon. There you go. And they also paid the details up in North Brookville when the house was being moved. Well, let's verify that with this regional director for government affairs, and then we'll yeah. get back to you on it. Okay? Yeah, you do that. So, anyway, that's the update on that, Linda. So, oh. I'm tired of hearing people say, I don't owe this. Right now, I owe this town Zippo for money. Nothing. I owe them nothing. Okay? Your little witch hunt is, is, is going to cost this town Dave, it's not big witch bucks. Hunt. You, you've got to stop. Big bucks. Okay. You've got to stop just it, making vague references. Yes. You have, okay. You've got to stop making these threats, Dave. To They're me. not threats. I'm just telling you, you what you people are doing. Witch hunt. You've got to, you've it is a witch hunt. It's Everybody's, not a witch hunt. Everybody comes to me and says, What's with the witch hunt? People out of other towns. All right, All right Dave, let's stop. Get All on right. to your next thing. Next question. I had a, a Clarence, I, I asked you a question on why there was four highway trucks. In the highway barn. Now we still got four one-ton trucks running. I don't know. You uh, said you were going to find that I, out two I, weeks I, ago. No, I talked to Cindy about that. It's to, to be disposed. One of them is. Yeah, to be one disposed, of them. So. They were just taking one of them. They were taking parts off of so that they could use it the part, <clears> and then it was going on the mirror bit. Okay, so now we have three on the road. Yeah, okay. there's only three on the road. Okay, not four. All right, what about your? It's four perfect barn. No, no, before when I spoke to you, there was four on the road. Okay, so now there's three no, there's on the only, road. There's, there's only three. There's only three on the road. One, Correct. Okay. one was no, you one answered, you, all, and they couldn't get an inspection, and they just used it to take parts off of it. And okay. Then they're going to sell it. All right, very good. 
All right, well, I spoke to you about a seasonal worker. Um, in your beloved dear bylaws, it states that we can only have a seasonal worker for six months. Now, if it's, if it's a calendar year, we're in violation. If it's a fiscal year, we're in violation. So I want to know why you three are violating the town bylaws, which you constantly talk about. Oh, he's violating or she's violating. And Beth, you said that I was incorrect and it was based on money. Now, it's not based well, on money. Mass General Law, which... Uh, we're, we're talking about Brookfield okay, right so now. Don't try, to, don't try to water it down. Is the person is considered... That's the definition. Right. That's right. So an employee hired for a specific period of time not to exceed six months. That's correct. So what's the problem? What is, is the the so employee who are you saying has been employed longer than six months? That's correct. Who Ooh. who Beth? The the seasonal work that we have down there. He started in April. No, it's a different person. He started no. in July. Yeah. Carrie can tell you he started in July. It's a total but we're still July. you're still going you're still gonna go on six months. You're going through the six months, mm -hmm. and six months is six months. That's a definition. It's per person, it's so. not per it's position. Unless you keep yeah. changing Dave, seasonal Eric, workers. Can you, we have um, the town accountant speak, please? Yeah. So the, the money is there no matter, no matter what. That's what's voted on. You can't keep a particular seasonal worker longer than six months. Okay. So if you change employees, you're starting over again with your six-month time frame. Okay, so. As long so as your money's still there, and you're still good. Providing we don't have the same seasonal worker. Yeah, that worker could be hired and fired a month in between, but a week he, in between. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But if he's there more than six months, we're violating the town bylaws. No. No, we're not. I read the direct town bylaws, so I'm not sure of that. Yeah, it's, it's very clear. Yeah, it's a but, definition. But, yeah, it's per Terry, he was hired in July, so <clears> if anything, he might be coming up on six months this moment, but we haven't been in violation. So okay. We'll look it into wouldn't it. be till January. Right. It wouldn't be. Yeah. So, Okay, so just, just letting you be aware of that. Okay, we are we're aware. Because if it's the same individual from if it was the same individual start in April, then then you are. Well, I know okay. when I did check into this though, one of them, um, I, if I remember right, Cindy said that it was one of them from the co-op because you tried to say we had two people down there, and I had talked to Cindy about it, and one of them was from that co-op that we were involved <coughs> with, and that person is paid through the co-op, not by the town of Brookfield. Uh, I saw money coming to, for that individual, I think you're referring to, that money was coming out of bridge and rails. I seen it in the warrant. Maybe Carrie, can you respond to that? There's um, some money coming out of the bridge and rails account for, for whatever she said. Yeah. That's the signs. That's signs account. That's he was separate. Probably, I think, now that you, I remember, Cindy said, he was down there making signs. Yeah, that sign machine was actually purchased as part yes. of the co-op. The co-op. The regional co-op. We we maintain the equipment. The in, the individual yes. comes yes. in and does the work for. I think it's still four or five communities yes. that and, we're making and signs. And that's how for. we. He's paid through the. Yep. the communities. And if if you remember in that conversation, I also said I saw him working up on the town common. And he's supposed to be, if he's working the co-op, he shouldn't be working for us I, on the roads. I, there are several departments in this town. You can work for 10 of them if you so choose. It doesn't matter what well, department you work for. Your department is individual to your position. And if you choose to work for 10 different departments, you may work for 10 different departments. There's no law stating that you can't. Right, but, it, but when the money's coming out of the bridge and rails, it does matter, Carrie. I can't confirm or deny that the money for our payroll is coming out of bridges and rails. Okay. That, that would come from the department that um, created that. Right, because that, um, okay. That, that's not me. Because that's where the money was coming out of. I, I cannot confirm or deny. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Yes, we are moving on. Um, Free cash. It's been two years now. What's why uh, we do not have this free cash certified yet? This is something that we are going to be talking about <clears throat> in our first thing on our agenda. We are going to be having an update by our by our audit. By what? By our auditor. By auditor Justin Cole okay. is here tonight, and he is going to give us an update on how the audit is doing. And just, I just want to add that just because you're not hearing about it in every town meeting doesn't mean there's not movement. There's movement in this direction every single day. Yes. So just because it's not brought up at a meeting every month does not mean that there is not activity. There is activity. We are here with an update today. And they've they've been working very diligently on this, Dave. 
and they have they, they, okay. everyone <coughs> is cooperating and we're getting all the right pro proper uh, paperwork handed into us okay that's all good that's good and fine i understand all that but still it's been two years two years since we've yeah. had it we had we had free, free cash certified year? talking one about year. one year it's one and we we'll wait and when you when is your next when are we going to have our next special meeting on this free? if you would wait for our if, update, if you we'll wait he, he is going to justin okay. is going to give us an update okay. on what's going on 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 the free cash no he's going to give us an on update the on the audit update. okay all right good that's that's good to know i'm glad you're doing that okay um, why is our channel 194 been off for almost three weeks? Nothing's been playing. I can't tell you. Sharon, do you have any update on that? You haven't said anything to me about it, Dave. You could have fixed it if you told me. Well, I uh, kind of got off that role of talking, you know. I've done it too many times. I just, it's been three weeks, so I just figured I'd ask. I can't hear a problem. I don't know anything about it. I don't watch cable TV. I okay. All right. So who who should some who should the residents call if it's not playing, in you know in in a length of time? They should send an email to the local access at brookfieldma.us. And how? Or they can leave a message with me if they have my number. Okay. And how soon does people pick up that email if, if they uh, email that down to does that go down we to the studio? Email daily. Okay. All right. I will I will pass that on. Okay. Good. Um. I think that's uh, why do we have a police officer in this room every time that you're here Linda and when you're not here there's no police officer here well um, the chief had called me today and he wanted to know if we'd like a police officer here this evening <clears throat> because if anything gets out of hand if I have somebody that gets a little you know out of hand and I speak to them and they don't listen and tell them that I can have them removed. This is why we have a police officer here. And and when have we had a situation like that in the past that we have to change the policy of taking a, a, a top-notch, high-paying police officer off the streets of Brookfield when he should be out patrolling our roads? Well, this, oh, proactive. Yeah, proactive move. It's a good. I think it's a good proactive? move. Proactive. It's a good move. That sounds like propaganda. Here, Dave, just in case something happens. Must have been one of the days you missed. So when when does that something happen though? We never know from meeting to meeting if something's going to happen. Somebody can come in here and get out of hand, and they don't want to listen to me, and so we have an officer here, and he'll remove that person from the meeting. But he, the it's all it's plain and simple. Last couple of times, and you're not here. The the officer's not here. I I don't know. We didn't have one, Madam Chairman. Um, <clears throat> with the current situation in the in the U.S. today. Yeah. Having someone here yeah. is, is probably a good idea. It's a good idea because you and, never know, Dave, what can happen in meetings. Well, we didn't have one last night. We had a, a pretty pretty yeah, good meeting last a, night and there was no this officer this here. This is a selectman's meeting. It's not just a, what meeting did you have last the night? The ZBA board. I mean, it's up to the ZBA. I mean, that was more exciting than if, the selectman's meetings ever been. Want, if the ZBA wants to have some somebody, they can request one. And we're just requesting it for our protection. With everything that's been going on across the country today, you don't know what can happen even in a small community. I think if, if you're referring to, to that type of incident, I think by the time, I think it would be all over and done before the officer could do anything, And if you're going to talk nonsense like that. Maybe I don't think it's... the people who uh, at, you know, half their town got annihilated over the weekend while in they church. Church. Yeah, in their church. Uh, I, 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 now, now you're... Happen. This is not... We're talking, we're talking right, a civil okay, meeting. Right. A let's civil do, meeting. Let's yeah. move on. We have quite a bit here on okay. our agenda this evening. Okay. Uh, I'm almost done here. Mm. All right. So you're going to discuss... Oh, what... Um, number nine. You're going to be discussing that in length? Nine? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to discuss okay. that this evening. Because we're spending too. a ton of money with attorneys in this town, so I just... Okay. okay. Yeah, we're going to discuss All right. It. All right. All right, very good, thank you. You are very welcome. And um, I see, if you're finished, Dave. I am finished. Okay. okay. Move to the rest Lord of the room. And I appreciate you listening to me. Okay. All right, thank Great. you. I see we have um, a Boy Scout, and probably <clears throat> his mom, they're here, and I think we'd like to have them address, because you know, they have to get home and you know, get ready for bed, and we don't want to keep them up here too late. So if they'd like to come up, they're very welcome to come up and address our meeting. 
He's a problem. That's okay. <laughs> oh, that's okay. He can stay back there if he wants to talk. They don't bite. And he can give his name. Um, Joseph Roderick. Yes, hi, Joseph. Nice to meet you. I'm, in, I'm, I'm Mrs. Lincoln, this is Mr. Snyder, and this is Ms. Hoffley. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to our meeting. Okay, thank you. And what are you here for to, this evening? Um, I'm working on um, citizenship and the community merit badge, so I have to um, go to a town meeting and write down um, what issues are and like what, like Excellent. That's yeah. good. That's a that's a nice thing for a young man like you to do, have to come to a meeting and realize, you know, what is actually going on in our meetings. So you mean like a selectmen's meeting here tonight? Uh, yeah. So how many does he have to attend? Um, just one. Yeah, that's just one. one. Yeah. And you just what we can probably do is give you our administrative assistant. Karen can give you a copy of our agenda, and it will tell. Do we have one? You already have one, and you know, and she can, and you can see, and you can tell what we discussed at our meeting this evening. Okay. So it's nice to see a young person up here interested in our meeting and to earn a citizenship badge. So I'd like to thank you very much, and good wishes on your badge. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Our next here is I. I have a. Um, I have a. A press release to read. The members of the board of selectmen have received inquiries and in some instances complaints about certain properties owned by David Holcraft. In light of these ongoing inquiries, the board wishes to inform the public that it has caused several enforcement actions to be commenced. Suit is currently pending in the Massachusetts Land Court properties at 26 Allen Road, 90 Lake Road, seeking these properties be cleared of open air storage of junk, salvage, and debris at properties. We are scheduled for a pre-trial conference on November 28, 2017, and a trial by the end of 2018. Aside from these enforcement actions commenced by the town, the board acknowledges that Mr. Holcraft currently has a law currently has a court lawsuit against the town challenging the determination by the Zoning Board of Appeals of the special permit issued in 2003 for his property at 6 South Maple Street has expired. Town Council has filed a motion to dismiss this complaint given the current pendency of legal action involving Mr. Holcraft and our property owned by him, the board is not at liberty to provide much more in the way of details about these matters. Nevertheless, the board felt that it is important to inform the public that this is taking legal action within the town authority under the law to remedy condition is deemed unsafe or unsanitary and or in violation of local bylaws or regulations. So this was just to let, we've had an awful lot of people, we get calls there at the town hall, and I'm sure the other two have had people just private inquiries. private inquiries, they'll stop us on the street and they'll ask us what's going on. So this is um, what I wanted to do tonight, was like a press release so people know what is going on in the community with this lawsuit. Your cronies are running mad in What? I said your cronies are running wild. <clears throat> well, Okay. Our next one here on our agenda is Justin Cole for our audit update. Good evening. My name is Justin Cole. I'm from Base 8 Municipal Accounting Group. Nice to meet you. So we've been working underway um, on the uh, closing of fiscal 2016 and 2017 and the subsequent filing of the uh, free cash for those fiscal years. So this process started uh, back uh, June 8th with a meeting with the Department of Revenue here at the Brookfield Town Hall. I remember I attended that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, the process that was outlined was um, approximately a 90 to 120 day 
um, engagement to work on FY16 and 17, uh, followed by fi the filing of FY16 um, around the Halloween time frame, and then um, certifying the 2018 recap with the town accountant, and then finally filing the FY17 year-end close um, for the town. So the status on those things are the preliminary numbers for FY16 have been submitted uh, to the Department of Revenue. Um, I'm going to have a follow-up meeting with them on Thursday to review the final operating results. Um, once those are accepted by the state, um, we'll move on to the FY17 year-end close. It's uh, an ongoing process, so that looks to be probably another 30 to 60 days. Um, our original timeline had um, all the filings uh, and the engagement wrapping up by around the Christmas holiday. Um, we're generally still on that same time frame, uh, give or take a week or two, so it may uh, dip slightly into the beginning of January. Um, but overall, uh, the, the town has been making fantastic forward progress and you know, being engaged and getting these issues resolved and moving the ball forward to, uh, to get the free cash done. Um, so Kerry has been instrumental in um, providing the information and helping to facilitate the process. I know she provides you with regular updates, you know, on the internal process. And she has been, she's been very good. Yep. Mm -hmm. So once 2016-2017 uh, uh, are completed and filed and accepted by the Department of Revenue, um, they will issue you a combined 2016-2017 free cash number. Mm -hmm. um, it's our anticipation that they will take their time in certifying the final number. So, um, you know, in a normal year, you know, you would expect that from the time of submission to the time free cash comes back is maybe five to 10 business days. Um, I would anticipate maybe upwards of 30 days to get the free cash back um, from a, for a number of reasons. One, from the, the scope of the work that's gone into uh, reconciliation and the filing. Um, because you're you're doing a, a double certification this year, 2016 and 2017, um, they'll be sure to do their due diligence to, you know, make sure that you know all the work that we've done and all the work that the town has done is uh, is uh, reasonable and um, you know and meets their internal audit requirements. Um, so I would say tentatively, your FY17 free cash would be back to you uh, sometime in the month of January. Um. Well, the way I, f I feel, Carrie and I had <clears throat> talked, I think it was it last week, and we went over a lot of the different things that, you know, we, that we had um, passed over. And didn't it only come to about 54000 It was really nothing that was really pending that we needed to go out and get it today. Mm -hmm. So the way we had discussed, the two of us, we didn't we think that it would be fine if we went into a town meeting probably sometime in January because I wouldn't want to go into one right now and do any raise it appropriate. And we should be able to set our tax rate, right, Justin? Uh, correct. If you don't have anything that needs to be raised and appropriated yeah. as far as your town meeting goes, yeah. um, then your tax rate should be ready to... Yeah, because the few work. things that we did take out, I remember the Department of Revenue had said when they were here, if we did need things, we could take it out of free cap, we could take it out of stabilization with the understanding with the town meeting people that we would take that amount and put it back in when it is certified. And this is what... I mean, I propose to do, and I hope I do have, we have the support of the rest of the board and the people here, the community. And so I think um, that there's nothing all that important that needs the, to come up. The one potential challenge that we have, um, and I don't think it's insurmountable, is that we did not adjust our police budget due to the fact that we're still in contract negotiations. So the one thing that we would have had on a fall town meeting that would have had to, well, at least by by standard practice, okay, so it doesn't have, by law, it doesn't have to come out of raise and appropriate, mm -hmm. okay, um, but the, the one area where we do have some financial risk is the fact that we did not adjust our police uh, budgets against uh, any proposed salary increase because it was all left 
level funded pending uh, resolution with regards to, to what the contract looks like. So where that would put us in a, a, a little bit of a position is that we might have to, um, if we do our town meeting after the first of the year, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of it is that any of the adjustments would have to come either from uh, stabilization or from that free cash that just got certified because it would be available to us. And although typically we don't do cover operating expenses from free cash, there's no law against it for all intents and purposes. So if we needed as a one-time deal because of the timing of all of this to do that, then there's nothing that necessarily constrains the town from addressing that those monies that way. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, we don't, so, so we don't have an issue. No, we don't have an issue. No, Al, no. did you I have was Exactly. I'll back up exactly what Beth, Beth said. That once, if we have the town meeting in, I mean, you could have it at the end of the month now, in November, nothing, you know, there'll be no raise appropriate. Which no, is but we don't want no, to do but, it. But we're saying but we don't we'll want wait to do it. But year to do what, it. I, what I was going to get to is it could be, at the, but even if it was, I'm saying, because there is no, whenever you set it, Yep. Uh, if there is no town meeting, then we have to set the tax rate. So you we, could have it in the middle of November or into January. At this point, it's not going to affect. Yeah, it won't affect the, the tax, tax rate. That's, that's all I was going to say. So no, we um, and the way I I feel, and speaking to uh, Carrie, I think it things can hold off, and I hope that the other board members agree with me because it's really nothing that we really have to raise an appropriate right. at this time. There's nothing, there's nothing that can't there's wait another no, 30 not, to 60 days. Wait a few months. Yep. So just the question on setting the tax rate, what do you think the appropriate timing might be? Because again, we've had some good success this year in growth and in collections. Yep. And so the question- I, I think the first thing I would like is something from the board that says that we will not have the town meeting okay. Uh, during this calendar year. I, I, I I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we not hold our town meeting until we've certified our 2017 free cash. I will second that motion. There you go. Um, and so in that case, discussion? I can start working. Yeah, you can start working. These numbers that need to come from Carrie and yep. other things that I haven't done much on. Okay. So. Oh, and all, any more discussion on this? Well, oh, only I, I'd, I'd encourage them to move forward yes. with that because I yes, think that I there's some good that. news there that we yes. ought to be sharing. We should be, yeah. And it's also, the sooner we can, going forward, a year from right yeah. now, if we can do the special town meeting in October mm -hmm. and then work on a tax rate in November, we get a lot more uh, help from DOR mm -hmm. because about 50% of the community is waiting until the last couple yes. of weeks and it's hard to get any help from and them. I, they, I, they can help, but they're not. I know that, I know that, Al, so from over the years. So the sooner we can do this, years. then we pretty much know in June what's yeah. gonna be on the special. Uh, uh, through the chair, what I'd, I'd uh, like to ask of the accountant is, is uh, how do you uh, feel in the go forward? So we we clearly, we're, we're working through, we've gotten some good, in essence, reconciliation of our accounts. My understanding is that this process was also going to include a restructuring that better aligns us with the state requirements for the account structures. Uh, from a, from your standpoint, in having kind of right heard on the process from the municipal side along with our, our consultant here, um, do you feel that unlike our, our previous practice where we tended to not even start filing our free cash until probably February or March the following year that we can actually comply with the state calendar where it's supposed to be filing it like September, October? I, I think that you guys have figured out I'm a little anal on the way that I operate. So I was um, hoping you were gonna it's go killing there, so. me that it's not yeah. that I'm not capable of doing yeah. this right now. Okay. It really is. Um, but what I've been working with uh, when Justin sent me um, information as to what I should handle by a certain date. I have actually a timeline set up for myself now so that moving forward, I just plug in what should be done, you know, at a certain time of year so that already the month or two ahead of that, I'm already thinking, okay, I got to start working on this. I got to start working on this. So I am developing um, my own habits that will help me to be successful in the future. A lot of that was not, um, there was no direction really provided when I got here. It was kind of, yeah, this is what you do and um, oh by the way you have to do this at some point too you know not by any fault of anybody else it's somebody who was here and 
you know, wanted to be out, and I get that. Um, but I have a lot more structure for myself this year. A good solid year of, of these transactions under my belt. Another year um, moving forward of filing these documents and being more familiar with them, understanding what they're actually saying. Um, and now that I can follow the numbers where they belong, it's a lot easier. Because trying to figure out what somebody did for the last 10 years when they were doing it completely differently than I could even fathom, I just... Like somebody was doing it like old school. Yeah. Carrie's coming in with the, with the newer methods to go. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to commend Carrie for, for the work that she has done here Absolutely. for this town. She came in and she's done wonderful and she knew we had problems and so that she she got in touch with Justin and she hired, had got approval to hire him to get all the books straightened I, 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 and crack I inside. I've, I've been advocating for a number of years that we bring somebody in like this in yeah. order to get this and she, finally and she has, She's done an excellent job here for the town. Yeah. I think it's all going to come down to procedural at yep. the end of the, yep, at the end of the day. That's what it is, and now that she knows what's going on, like she just said, she knows what month, what day, where she has to put all of these things so that she can get everything in order for another year. Not only that, but um, it, it's going to sound strange, but marrying the transaction yep. from department to department, yep. I right. was only looking at the accounting portion of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the flow, the, 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 flow yeah. of the whole process. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I may have been doing my end, but where there was no yeah. treasurer at the time, maybe she, that didn't get done. And yeah. so that's kind that of where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. And we have wow. it, and we do. We have like a new financial team, and you know they're all, all working together for the same goals. How are we doing with? Um, getting the virtual systems better integrated across the departments. Are we we are all going to training tomorrow. Oh, yeah, they're, they're all going day. to they're <laughs> all going to training. Yep. Woohoo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, they just make me happy. Yeah, they are. I'm kind of a uh, figure it out on your own person. Right. So over the last year, I've learned a lot about our computer system um, just by poking around, but that's my nature. So somebody who isn't comfortable fiddling around in a co computer program is only going to really do what they've been shown how to do because they don't have the confidence to say, hey, if I touch this, I don't know how to fix it. Yeah. Right. You know? You can always um, pick up the phone and get reverse yeah. it by calling Vader. Right. But scenario. a lot of people aren't confident to do that, you know? So um, I think having uh, Lonnie in the treasurer's office is open to really, really learning how to use mm -hmm. the system. She and I have been poking around in her side, learning her side a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely helping me to uh, realize what the other departments are doing as well, because now I'm looking at the whole puzzle, not just my tiny piece. So. And I had talked to Lonnie today, and she asked my permission if it was all right if she went to anything that she saw that would have any help with her office, anything financial. I said, of course, I said, go ahead with it. Because I said, this is how you're going to learn. Yeah. And I said, you network with people. And I said, your networking is one of your most important things you can do. You just pick the phone up from another uh, treasurer, from another community, and they're willing to help. Yeah, a lot of the stuff through uh, Mass yeah. Municipal and those those oh, yeah. meetings, they've got a bunch of financial. Oh, yeah, she's been getting them on. So she yeah. has been, uh, she's been, she wanted to know if it was fine. I said, you go ahead and you do what you have to do to learn your job and so you can do it better. And I think she's well, coming well, along good and she's hoping possibly maybe that Keith might be able to stay an extra month with us. Um, one thing that would be nice is um, and this should be across the board, not just if the treasurer goes to training, yeah. but it's kind of like when I went to that selectman's, uh, mass selectman's yeah. meeting and sent notes back of the trip to mm -hmm. other people that are in similar, you know, job fields, even if it's different. I mean, as the accountant, your role is very different from the treasurer, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if she goes to some of those trainings, if she would share her personal notes with the rest of the financial team, because there may be some stuff mm -hmm. that's pertinent well, to... I'm sure she it, will. So, yeah. I'm sure that she will. I'll discuss this with her, too. Then you're going to be gone tomorrow, so you'll be back Thursday? Yep. I'll, I'll talk to her about that on Thursday. That'd be great. Excellent. And on another note, we did actually have our first financial team meeting, too. Yes. Um, this past month, which was, um, I think that was a good thing to kick off. Yeah, and that's something, didn't we talk about having it, I forgot what the date, but certain time in each month we would have it. Yep. And so that it wouldn't have to be a posted meeting, I said that I would, you know, attend it with it. Okay, great.
If there's ever a month that there's a conflict, let me know yeah. and I might need to attend. Progress. It, you know, we're getting progress and we're happy. And thank you, Justin, for coming on board and helping us out with all of this. He's so, still smiling. That's positive. So, <laughs> so, 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 we'll, a lot for that brain <laughs> so, well, even after you're done with the audit, I mean, if there is any little things that you can help the financial team with, you'll be available to give them a hand? I will be. And, and if you'll recall, um, you, you folks also voted to uh, participate in the regionalized yes. uh, financial processes mm -hmm. grant as well. Yep. So, um, you know, hopefully that process closes, um, I believe it's next week, you know, so hopefully um, we'll know one way or the other back on that as well. Okay. And, and so that would be, that would provide funding, um, you know, outside of the tax base. That's uh, for from, a whole, from the state for a whole year? For an entire year. Yep. Yep. Yes, that's of, good. Of continued support. Okay. Perfect. Can I ask uh, Justin and Kerry uh, if we were to try to move a special town meeting next year into October, does that make sense? Is there any reason? Are could? you challenging me? Uh, no, I'm making sure we're on the same. Uh, I just want to make sure we're on the same wavelength. So we. If you, know, you want to push for an October, I will do everything in my. Power. I mean, the end of October it could be. I mean, I just I just want to make sure that what. I'm thinking is what makes sense. What you mean for, for yeah? It's, what for meeting? Is it conceivable? Right. Is, is what yeah, it's very doable. Yeah. With all the years I have been around, I don't. The earliest we have ever had them is probably early November. Okay. We've mm -hmm. never actually had one in October. That's Are a you thinking just to see the eye going up? <laughs> <laughs> so that's your challenge. Well, if you think you can get things ready for an October meeting, we'll go with an October meeting. Write okay. it down. Yeah. Get all the goblins out yeah. at the town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so we're very happy with what what's come up, what, you know, what's coming forward for us. And I thank Justin and I thank Karen. Appreciate it. And I appreciate all the other, the you know, the rest of the yeah. financial team, the other departments, with all of the you know cooperation that they have given that Justin needs, and you know they've come forward with everything they can and answered all of the questions that they have. Right. It's progress. We're moving. Moving all towards the right way. Yeah. In a positive way. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, great. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you guys. Thank you. Our next on the agenda is the solar contact review, and I think that is out. Back again. Back, Back again. again. Okay, not a huge, you know, not a lot on this. I just wanted to let you know where it is. Um, as you know, they they came to me about putting what you know to put together a uh, to work with them to put together a contract, but it really goes through you, through KP Law, back through me, back to you. So where we are right now is I've talked uh, I talked with uh, Rick Holland. I believe yeah, Rick Holland from KP Law. Yeah. Oh, she did get somebody. Can yep, you and, uh, and he was really good about getting right back to me. Had a great conversation with him, and he recommended that we work with uh, Roy Bishop, who we normally use anyways yeah. for um, for assessing. Um, so I've spoken with him. We have to continue. Um, he's He is getting, he works with multiple communities. My concern is I don't want to leave money on the table. I want to make sure yeah. that we have a valid, you know, a uh, what, fair, what we what we organize, what we yeah, agree to is similar and fair. Yeah, you don't want to undercut anything, but I also don't want to, you know, we don't want to go on the high end. But we just don't want to be, we just don't want to leave anything out there because whatever we set, I feel on this one is going to set a precedent going forward. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make sure that, and you have to compare apples to apples because there's some towns, like our other one that we have here, there's also an energy buyback or something. So it's not yeah. apples yeah. to apples. You can't compare the two. Um, but I just want to make sure that we have other ones that we're comparing to. I know that the guy from Clean, uh, John Cluen from Clean Footprint, was pushing to get things done by the end of the year. Uh, I don't feel comfortable having somebody push us to make any kind of an agreement. They can go ahead and build. There's a lot of building. This, this has to go before town meeting also, doesn't it? Um, 
Mm-hmm. I don't no, believe so. I thought it's it a payment in lieu of taxes. Oh, I thought it was a tax in lieu of payment in lieu of taxes. I thought that had to have um, town meeting approval. No, I think what they're trying to do is they don't want us to come out and say, okay, the infrastructure is worth 1.5 million. To, yeah. We want it to be. They don't want to be taxed on 1.5 million. Yeah. There really is no. The, 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 if you look at the solar on your house. Because it's primarily for for your own house, they don't tax it. So have you, have you checked the Mass Municipal Association and a few of the other entities? Because I think there's a bunch of at least information papers out. I'm not certain if they're from the state through like the DOR or whether it's it's through. Mass oh, there's Municipal. all there's all kinds of stuff. There's regional there's stuff. Yeah, I've read. Dialogue. The more you read, the more you read. The more is referenced. Yeah. yeah cause and I then the more that. is referenced, you kind of get overwhelmed. So. If you do, you want me to dig into some of that? Or I kind of want to. I'm going to work with Roy, and I'm going to see if we can't come up with a uh, a ballpark figure based on yeah. maybe a, you know half a dozen similar yeah. con, you know that installs that have gone in in the last 12 to 18 months. And then from there, the, the thing that the the, uh, the developers seem to be saying, the people that are installing these, geez, Mass isn't giving us all the credits they used to, so we're, we have to drop what we yeah. give you. But what you have to keep in mind with a pilot is it's a payment in lieu of taxes, so it's a, a tax that it's, it's being assessed to the installation. Yeah. It has nothing to do with what the state is reimbursing or how sweet they're making right. the deal. And, and there's a couple of other things to be very aware of in this industry. And there's probably a lot of entities out there who are trying to, to, to cry poor mouth about the solar credits right now. But um, I'm on some of the email traffic around the solar credits, and they were talking about extending and expanding the solar credits pretty significantly because most people aren't really realizing that Yankee is going to have to, by law, shut down in about, I think it's 18 months or two years. And the market in New England currently does not have sufficient generation to manage some of these nuclear plants going offline. So there's, there's some pretty significant um, market forces that are going to make this a really sweet deal for the people who are building the solar um, areas today. And actually, Mass's grant program, I think, is expanding. They're, they're looking at expanding it, particularly if you do offline storage as part of the solar installation. Mm -hmm. So if you do offline storage, you get like a really significant bump of funds back from the state, because what they're looking for is for these facilities to be able to feed back into the grid at night and level low. So right. anybody who's trying to like cry, we're not going to get enough benefits from the state, you know, be nice to us on our taxes, is trying to take advantage of them, assuming we're not aware of both the market forces and what the state's doing right now from the standpoint of incentivizing mm -hmm. these projects. And keeping in mind that it, it, it's a 20-year agreement. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, we, we need to make sure we, yeah. we, we do it appropriately. So thanks yep. for the due diligence. Yep. Not a problem. getting the right people involved. Well, we'll find out. Wait till we get to the end of it. Then yeah. we'll find out well, if we got the right. Know, we at least, we're, we're trying. We're trying to do our due diligence. Yep. We're trying. We'll educate ourselves the best we can, and we'll, and we'll make, hopefully, the best uh, possible agreement that we can for the town. And, yep. again, that way it sets us up going forward that we can say, okay, here's our boilerplate. This is what... This is the contract that we just signed with these folks. Yeah. You want to do something are, similar? This are, is where we're working from. Are they providing you some of the details, like what their efficiency rate is going to be and, and what the duration? Not, no, is. not yet. That's part. That's where we're going with this to get an idea of what the actual infrastructure. What do they value it at yeah. versus yeah. what do we think it, it is? And okay. do you do the income approach? Do you do the cost approach? There's different ways to do it, okay. um, but I want to make sure that. Um, Everybody's going to fudge figures, so you can't. Everyone's uh, going to try to manipulate it. Every, to make it look, look exactly, good. they're going to make it look like it has no value, and so we're just going to. I've noticed this past week they're they're starting to progress up there to you know get the panels and everything you know. And yeah, ultimately it'll be start. two separate ones. One's yeah. on fifty-two. One's on fifty, and one's on fifty-four. I know, but they're doing work on both different parcels. I've noticed in the last couple right. of days. Right, but it's two separate farms versus yeah. one big farm. I yeah. don't know if that. Makes yeah, a that's difference. not now. Basically, though, where is that going to really generate? It will help us out around here, or so it'll feed into the grid, and it'll just be power that's mm -hmm. available. Yeah, it's just a, it's just under a megawatt, which is a, yeah. it's probably about um, forty percent bigger than the one that's at uh, 
50, now being 50% bigger than the one that's on the um, the uh, landfill. Down, down here there. with the landfill, okay. Oh. It's a good size. It'll be... I think it's good, like you say. With yeah, the, yeah. Uh, given the fact that we're going to be losing some sources of power in the yeah. next few years, it's important that a lot of these projects happen. So, thank you, Will, for okay. staying on top of this. Have a good, that's it. I'm done for tonight. Good okay. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay. Our next one on is to ratify um, the, the purchase of the Crown Victoria that was um, the police chief's fire chief in his old vehicle. We put it out on Munibid. And we have, uh, we just want to, it was, it was sold already for uh, $400, and we just want to uh, entertain a motion to ratify this purpose. You have a motion to ratify. Second. Any discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Our next one is um, a letter of request from, um, from, uh, it was from Carrie Von Hold, who lives on up River Street. She's asking to be appointed to be a member of the Brookfield Recreation Committee. And she says in the past she's um, served on the Brookfield PTO, and she's been the president for two years, and she's volunteered as a softball coach. She's assisted the Recreation Committee. She started an adult co-op softball league, and she said she would appreciate the opportunity to further assist our community and serving on the Brookfield Re Recreation Committee. And she said, thank you for your consideration. So uh, and so I would like to, Jeff uh, Landine is in the co-op piece. Yep, Jeff, Jeff Cole. Yep. So um, I'd like a motion to appoint yeah, the um, motion. Carrie Roth. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, June 30th, 20th. Yeah, she'll be on until June 30th, um, 2018. resignation and this is one that I kind of regret seeing happening because he's done a wonderful job for us here in the town. This is from Brian Oxman. He's school committee member. He says, Dear Mr. Siri, I'm writing to inform you that I am officially resigning from the Brookfield School Committee following the December 2017 meeting. I would like to request on behalf of the school committee that we attempt to schedule a joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee in order to make a decision regarding the vacant seat. I have been very thankful for the opportunity to serve you, Brian Oxman. And I want to thank Brian. Brian has done, he's been the chairman, he's done an excellent job for us. And awesome I, really hate, I really hate to see him leave. So we have to take a motion. Motion with regret. With regret to accept the designation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Karen, you'll get him a, a letter off. And um, I think, I mean, we will only have what, about five months left in between. I do think that it is a good idea to appoint somebody for those five months. Absolutely. So we'll have to, we'll get together with the school committee and we'll have to see if they have some different people that are interested. When, when would our normal January meeting be? Would it be the first week or seven, yeah. seven? Yeah. We haven't set them yet. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. But maybe before Brian leaves, you know, maybe we can get together and see if he has any recommendations on who he would think would do a good job on the school board. And they can get some feelers on it. Yeah. Right. And now, our next one here on the agenda is to sign the uh, Cultural Council Annual Funds Transfer. It's a, it's a thing that we do every year. It's a transfer of the uh, Fiscal 18 Local Cultural Council funds from the Mass Cultural Council in order to uh, have accounts for the uh, Cultural Council here in Brookfield. And um, they don't have any um, amount. I looked at all over. They, there wasn't any money amount that they specified, but I would like uh, to have uh, permission to sign this um, for this contract. Make a motion for signature of the Cultural Council annual funds transfer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Today is the seventh? Yes.
our next one here is a contract for the CB, CDBG administration services for the grant for the ADA transition plans, the senior sub design project, and the Hayden F and Draper and High Street and High Engineering Design Project. The grant awarded was three hundred and sixty three thousand dollars and sixty six hundred and ninety nine dollars and to administer this grant um, CDBG is charging us a hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. So I'd like permission to sign this also. Motion to sign. Okay. Need a second. No, yes, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And what this is also doing is through that eighty-five thousand, it's actually going after more money, yeah. so it doesn't stop with the uh, just the grant. Right. That committee actually has been doing phenomenal work as a team yes, in I identifying mm -hmm. not just first stages in the process, but in continuing and stepping through the processes in order to yeah. get stuff that can go to completion. Okay. Now, Michael ha Mike has to sign this, and then Carrie also has to sign this. So we have to have all of the signatures on it. Okay. Madam Chairman, can you explain, explain that to the public about the 85000 in the grant? The, well, the 85, that's to administer it. Yeah, okay. They, yeah, yeah. they admit, they manage the grant, and they're the ones that, you know, take care of uh, most of our paperwork and you know anything that needs to be done where the grant is concerned and they and they you know will pay out the money for it so they administer that grant first of all they wrote the grant they wrote that yes they also they wrote so the they grant for wrote, us which captured the 365,000 yeah. yeah so that's which, what they're charging us that's what they're charging that's coming out of the grant though that is yes, that's, that's, that's coming out of no that's coming out of the grant money no so. this is the third time we've gone for this grant um, Street, so we can we don't know if we're going to get a check. Y yes, we have, we we have, have it. it. I said, hey, that's what this is. Draper and High. But have we been awarded the grant? Is what I'm yes. asking. You. Yes, okay. yes. Right. This is what it is. I just signed the contract for that. And also, what it does, it's um, it's plans for uh, ADA transition plan for a senior center design project. Also. So, so what are they going to actually do on the on those three roads that you mentioned? design of the it, infrastructure, I yeah. believe, but it does grease the wheels, this is how they explained it to me, <laughs> is that getting this grant greases the wheels for future physical future. grants, for the fit, for grants for fiscal work. Right. You have to go through the process. So, so this is only to do engineering, per se? More or less. This isn't going to be actually doing any physical work to the world. No, the next grant will take Because I just had a bunch of my people sign a whole bunch of documents, I just turned them into one yesterday. You didn't turn them into me. I turned them into the, you know, I turned them into Justin from the CDB. Oh, okay, okay. So that's why I was wondering. I just gave him paperwork. So what, what, was, what was this date that you turned in? Um, just uh, people in the neighborhood. Uh, if, they, if they lived there, if they ran home. Oh, okay. It that's why I was wondering. I just turned them in, and now you, you got oh, something okay. approved. Income eligibility information. Okay. Thing, right. Is that for the physical, actual work to be done on the road? I believe it's for this grant, and then, like I said, it, it sets the it lays the groundwork for future grants that will be the road. That's the goal: is to get a grant for the future physical work, but you have to go through this process. Yeah, have the design yeah. documents. So this money is going to be for design and the yes, drainage design. and all this yeah. type of stuff. Design, right. Okay. So I'm just wondering why I turned in, why the paperwork just got turned in, and you got this grant already. Maybe that's for the physical grant then. No, this is a design, and, and right, also right. Right. Yeah, and to do the design, yeah. they would have to get the documentation before we get to the actual work on the road. Mm -hmm. And the design also to do if we can have a future senior center. Right, right, right. That's part of that's that's part of that's the part of the <clears throat> Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Next, we're going to go on to special use permits, and these are for uh, using uh, the lake down Quaybog Lake, and one is the. Uh, Group, and this is for um, next August, and it's 90, one is 97 fish, it's called, and another one, we able to get a printout of all the ones that we I did, remember I gave you at the last meeting, I, I handed you the uh, spreadsheet of all of them, when we had the meeting inside the selections office. Okay. I'll go back and look at it. And the other one, okay. and this is another one for um, 
May of 2018 is the Blackstone Valley Bass Anglers. And the next one is um, for June of 2018 is the Baskin W Mass Small Boat Kayak Trail. So these are three different ones. So um, I'd like to make a motion. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Our next one is to authorize Town Council to repeal recent decision by the Board of Appeals. And do we have anybody here to speak on that tonight? Mr. Comfort? Yeah, you can speak. You can, of course, you can come up and speak. You want to come up? Yes, you can come up and speak. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What would you like me to speak about? Well, uh, we had, um, I know that, um, I'm Sharon, do you want to get involved with this a little bit too? I've already given the uh, parties involved all the information you need. Thank you. Okay. I know that we, that we had an appeal by the planning board that this, what this did when you granted this to uh, Mr. Holm, what happened was it, it's in a residential district and the appeal, I mean, like Homer Road, is only bylaw. And we would like to ask if you would, um, if town council can um, appeal this decision that was made by me. Per my personal opinion, town council was in the room. It was discussed uh, through Ms. Mahoney's request. It went from an application of a special permit to a variance, which mm -hmm. We had the right. It, it, you can shake your heads now. You're both in the room. That's what happened. I wasn't here, so I. Oh, Beth, Beth, and Sharon Actually, are shaking their heads. The well, I'm, sh I'm sure you saw it. Um, <clears throat> the conversation was had through town council. Uh, we had the discussion that it could be appealed. Me personally, I don't believe the town should be paying for an appeal. If Miss Mahoney has an issue, she can appeal it personally and spend her money. My request would be to um, petition Mr. Holmes to ask if he'd like to withdraw that. I don't know the procedures on repealing it through the ZBA. If we have to have another special hearing for that, I don't think we just arbitrarily do it without a hearing. But I, I adamantly believe enough to come to this meeting tonight that the town shouldn't be spending money on it. Well, I know when people do appeal decisions, they have a 20-day appeal period. Correct. And it is to the town clerk. Correct. To the town clerk, and I know a lot of times if it, if it's not the board, but my understanding it was being made by the planning board. So, and if it's a per, but if it's just a regular resident, then they have to pay for their own council to do it. But I know a, a board wouldn't; they would use our town council. But the thing is, I, I mean, I can't really see having. So the hiring a separate, you know, a separate firm to represent another board. Now, there's going to have to be some sorting out in order to, right. to verify yeah. this because um, the the largest challenge comes from and and in some discussions, um, there's a lack of real clear understanding, specifically in the zoning board of appeals about what's in our zoning laws and what's allowable and unfortunately the kind of on the fly question to the See, attorney oh, I'll just let me finish yeah. what i'm saying mr comptois i i gave you the courtesy you don't need to get confrontational beth finish let's go okay. you love to talk and that's my biggest problem about you finish up okay um anyway so the the biggest challenge there is that our zoning bylaws do not allow for the Zoning Board of Appeals to, to actually issue a variance. Use variance. What's that? So she can overspeak you, but I can't. Do we see the hypocrisy in this meeting? Do we see the hypocrisy in this whole board, in this whole conversation? This, this is ridiculous, Linda. This is absolutely ridiculous for a board to supersede a ZBA meeting and a decision where you guys chose arbitrarily without even contacting any member of the board to have town council sitting at our meeting. I've never heard of that before in my life. To have town council come to a ZBA meeting. It was my understanding that you requested the There was no request there. I've never requested town. When, when I came to that meeting and saw Jeff sitting on the steps, I was absolutely dumbfounded. 
because my tax dollars, everyone's tax dollars in this room, every tax dollar in that camera is paying for someone to sit here who gave us the advice that we could move forward with what we did. And Beth made a statement that we are ignorant. If I'm paraphrasing that, I apologize, well, but I'm are. taking it as ignorant. And we're not, because the first thing that came out of my mouth was that the bylaws are very specific. Made the comment to David, the, and I believe you're shaking your head because you were there. They were very specific that the town voted that they did not want that use in that district. That's where Ms. Mahoney claimed that it's not a special permit issue, it's a variance issue. We sought counsel through town council, he made the same statements that I said before. If Ms. Mahoney wants to appeal it, let Ms. Mahoney appeal it. Don't let the town of Brookfield appeal it. Why don't you contact Mr. Holmes and ask him if he'd like to withdraw it or what he'd like the ZBA to do? This is ridiculous, Linda. It's absolutely ridiculous. Well, it was my understanding. Okay, Sharon. I'd like a chance to speak of this, please, because there are a number of misrepresentations, Mr. Conkwa, about the process and about town bylaws. But who, now, my understanding, I was under the impression that the Zoning Board of Appeals had asked Town Council to come out. Who had Ab asked Town Council not. to come out? I asked him, he said the Board of Selectmen. We did. We did give him permission to come out. I didn't have Jeff's number until, I don't know if Karen or Clarence gave it to me when I was in the Selectmen's so office. Actually, actually, I think in a, pre, in a prior meeting we had asked if there were um, meetings that had a likelihood of, of requiring legal advice because we had such a high volume of kind of special instances, specifically actually Zoning Board of Appeals. I think we did ask them I, to be present <coughs> because there was the problem where um, in some of the earlier Zoning of Appeals meetings that the chair at the time, Mr. Wilson, had either not reached out or not, or that, not known what questions to ask prior to the meeting so that there was clear delineation of what the, the the law was with regards to those particular hearing inquiries. So but maybe I think those, we, but I don't I remember maybe I don't I remember asking giving permission for him to come out. I, th I think we did. Um, Sharon, is that something maybe you could look I up and submit? I don't remember I don't remember I think someone gave permission for them to contact town council no, and then if, if there, I don't know Linda, I don't remember. I wonder if, I, I wonder if Nick was the one that asked him to come on. That may have been Jeff, actually. Jeff Eugenio specifically stated that the directions came from the Board of Selectmen. No. All right, Sharon. I, I don't remember giving permission. I'm going to research it. Okay, we'll research it and we'll find out. Yeah. But there's no need. It is what it is. And I don't know what Sharon's going to share in regards to this decision. It's a yes or a no. Do you provide town council to let the planning board seek? I would like a chance to address the board to correct some yes. of Mr. Conquest's statements. Okay, you have our Thank permission. You, First of all, the planning board's vote to appeal this decision was unanimous, five to zero. It was unanimous for the following reasons. If you watch the tape carefully, I brought up the fact that properly, Mr. Holmes should be going for a variance because the use he wanted to make of his property was expressly forbidden in the town bylaws on the use regulation table. Mr. Blake agreed with me. He then turned to the zoning enforcement officer and said, properly, it would be a use variance subject to approval by the town's bylaws according to Mass General Law, Section 48, Chapter 10. I have a copy here. Chapter 48, Section 10, variances reads, except where local ordinances or bylaws shall expressly permit variances for use, no variance may authorize a use or activity not otherwise permitted in the district in which the land or structure is located. So Mr. Blake turned to Mr. Mr. Tomo and said, does the town allow for use variances? And he said yes, he was incorrect. I have checked the town bylaws. The town has not adopted Section 10 of 48. So therefore, the ZBA had no right to issue a use variance. End of, end of story, open and shut. It's no reflection on the ZBA that they didn't know this, although maybe they should have. 
Mr. Blake was asked this on the fly, and he properly asked the CEO to check, and Nick made an incorrect statement. Unfortunately, I tried to contact Mr. Comtois so I could address the ZBA personally about this. I sent two notices to the secretary of the ZBA. I had to call and ask her if that had been passed on to the chair because I heard nothing back. She said he'd been made aware of my request. She told me that it was between him and me. So I called the town clerk and I said, have you heard anything about whether or not I'm on the agenda? And he said, Mr. Comtroy came to me, and I'm paraphrasing here, and told me that he has no issues with what happened at the meeting, so I have nothing to share with her. So I was not allowed to go on the agenda and to, to talk to the ZBA prior to the end of the appeal period. The reason I wanted to do this is because I've heard from town council that if the ZBA had withdrawn this permit prior to getting it to the town clerk and having him stamp it, they would have been able to do that without town council getting involved. I was denied the chance to speak at the ZBA meeting. The permit was given to the town clerk and stamped, and the only recourse now is court. And that's unfortunate. I shared this information with the planning board, and they agreed with me. The town is in violation of Mass General Law and the town bylaws by the ZBA making this action. And so this is what we have to do next. And it is not a personal thing, despite what some people might think. This is a matter of good order, a matter of the town bylaws, a matter of Mass General Law. So we got to unwind it. Yeah. Unwind it. And yeah, so, so therefore, I respectfully <laughs> request that the board grant the planning board, not me, the planning board to work with town council on this, to reverse this decision and declare, declare it annulled according to Mass General Law. <clears throat> Section 17, Judicial Appeal. Well, uh, I feel once you start, once they start giving us these variances to override zoning bylaws, you're going to have people coming in here all the time and going to the zoning board of appeals and they're going to be granting them either a special permit or a variance. So I would, if I would like to make a motion that uh, Ms. Mahoney can uh, go ahead and contact uh, council to appeal this decision. I'll second that. Yeah, thank you. What we have to do, and then again, Steve's made a, a recommendation or suggestion with respect to unwinding it in a, in a different way. So, yes. so through discussion, Madam Chair, we're, we're discussing an appeal here. We're not discussing a discussion with town council on how to do this correctly. Mm -hmm. um, you're, setting, you're setting a precedence that boards can appeal decisions at the expense of town taxpayers. This is not a unheard of process. Well, I talked with town council about if this. If you were so adamant about it, Sharon, you could have reached out to me before. You've contacted me. I did me. reach out to you, you by email, not, Steve. You did not Sharon, respond you, to me directly you, at all. You, you did never, not give me the courtesy yeah. of a response. You, you, nev you never emailed me. You've never had a problem in any other capacity to call my personal cell phone for any request. You, you didn't. This, this is silly, Linda. This is so, silly board. So, you don't have a choice. So, 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 so for, for a discussion point, I say that I'd like to make a. Uh, I'd like to amend the motion to say that that we're authorizing all appropriate activities up to and including um, actually allowing town council to engage on behalf of the planning board. But if in the process of that discussion we discover some method other than taking it to the court, so, so uh, Madam Chair, through, Madam Chair, may I recommend that me as the chairman of the ZBA reach out to town council? and see what we can do to take care of it, which would save a lot of money to the town, mm -hmm. as opposed to an appeal well, process. Well, that, uh, it, would, it would change the motion, that's why I bring it up. Well, I just, I just, I just proposed an amendment to the motion that we, that we contact him and find out but I, what other alternatives. But the motion was through Ms. Mahoney. I would recommend that the chair of the ZBA take care of the issue. That, you, that it's, Madam uh, Chair, this, the ZBA took care of the issue and they took care of it incorrectly. We took and care I, of I, legal I sent an email to the ZBA through the secretary and I never got a response. So the, the claim that I never contacted Mr. Contra was incorrect. I not only called <clears throat> the secretary twice, I emailed her twice. 
Instead, so, Mr. Confer chose to speak to the town clerk about it instead of to me. So if we go back to best motion, best motion was to look for a process to unwind, unwind. Right. up and including taking into the court if that's absolutely necessary. What Mr. Contrast has offered is the st a step one, possibly, in that process. And so I'm, I'm thinking we ought to move forward with best um, amendment to the motion. And then, and, then and, and, and then with that, to, to turn to Steve, and if, if Steve was willing to do to make that telephone call to Jeff, then then to report back to us as to step one and whether or not that that's successful. I have one more fact to add. The clock is ticking on this. The, the decision was made on the 23rd. There's a 20-day appeal period. My appeal would have to be filed on the 13th of November. You don't have a lot of time with this. I would expect and if you're putting this in Mr. Comtois' hands, I'm concerned that this communication will not take place in time for an appeal to go forward should it become necessary. Well, Has this board ever known me not to follow through on anything that I've ever no, said? No, I know. We've worked with Steve before, and he is, has been good. And and I, I, I believe, we're, we're working for the town. And I believe that he will call. He would call. I would urge him to call immediately. Call Mr. Blake tomorrow. So if the... If it has to be filed by the 13th, today is the 7th. The 7th. Okay, so... So that gives so, you six days. Right, but in essence, I think that um, if Mr. Comtois would potentially uh, get back to yourself as the chair by the 9th, and then if there's no other recourse than to go ahead and authorize them to file the appeal within the timeline required under state law. Madam Chair, I'll call Jeff on my way home this evening. If I don't get him, I have his cell phone number. Okay. I'll reach out to Karen tomorrow morning when she comes okay. in. And, and I my, take you for your word. I know you when you have done things before. You've been very good. About Madam it. Chair, if I could be copied on any email correspondence on this, so that I get it directly from Mr. Blake, I would appreciate that because for my own, not only for my own edification, but for my boards. I don't yeah. like having to repeat something I'm told by a All third right, party because I might get it wrong. I, I'll have Steve is going to talk to, to Jeff tomorrow. I, I won't be corresponding through email. I'll be corresponding through the clerk. Yeah, that's what I said. And he'll speak to Jeff, and um, then Jeff can... Anything that comes... Yeah. And my recommendation to, to Jeff will be if we can have a meeting, which we can post in two days, and take care of it. And then we'll have... Um, you will have everything cc with you. I would appreciate that, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now wait one minute now. Did you say that you would have it go through your secretary, then to Karen, or will you speak I'll, directly I'm to Karen? Speak directly to Karen. He'll speak he'll speak. Okay. And then you can maybe authorize Jeff then to you know do correspondence and a letter and email to you and then maybe put it in writing. In, in writing. Okay, to the board. You still have your two um your two motions on it. Oh, okay. No, we, we dissolve so one. One, and so we're going to make it one. And it's one. Yeah, and I'll make the motion that we accept Beth's amendment. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's how you're going to do that. Well, yeah. how else can we do That's the best way to do it. That okay, all right. So, so you you made the amendment. Yes. And I'll second that. So we'll vote on the do amendment. Do we have Dave had his hand up? I get a, I get a question. Steve had, a, hmm? Steve had a suggestion about the applicant. Which would come in and just say, maybe could write something and say if that's if he wants to then say he wants to withdraw his application and we don't have to go through all this. If that can be done legally. You say I withdraw my application. Well, that's, I, think what, I think that's what Steve is gonna check with, yeah. with Which him. which I don't yeah. I don't believe you can, but Yeah, yeah. I don't think Okay. You can. I just thought that was no. simple and quick and something we checked out. No. We're spending he, enough money now on the attorneys. He's gonna call he, he Steve is gonna call town council. And um, then he's going to get back to Karen, and then everything will come back, and Sharon will get CC'd, and we'll find out what's going to go on. Okay, Bob, I'd like to make um, a motion. Vote on the amendment. Mm -hmm. Vote on the amendment. Aye. All in favor is that. We've got the that. main motion. May, we're going to rescind that main motion. Yep. Yeah. And, and I'd like to have a, a motion on that. I think it's just we're, we're down back to the main, main motion, okay. so, so we're now going to vote on the main motion. Which is the amended motion. The amended motion. So it's just a, a matter of voting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, aye. Aye. Okay, then it passes. 
Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Okay. John Holcraft, 17 High Street, Brookfield, Mass. Dear Mr. Holcraft, the, the Mass Dot Highway Division District 3 office is contacting you regarding the signage on the front of your property at 17 High Street, Brookfield, adjacent to South Maple Street. Upon our review, district staff has determined that a large portion of the signage is encroaching on the state highway layout. We would like to meet with you to discuss this matter in further detail as we have received a recent complaint. Please call <coughs> Peter Cavatacci, District Operations and an Engineer at 508-929-3862 to schedule a site meeting at your earliest meeting. <coughs> and very truly yours from Matt Dot, Dot District 3, Barry J. Lauren, Acting District Highway. Director, have they been in touch with you? Yes, we met with them because you, you, I guess you guys filed a complaint trying to get the sign down, Clarence again, <clears throat> trying to violate my civil rights, and it's not going to happen. So what happened was um, DOT did come out, and we had an hour discussion. Um, my sign is in their layout. They have a 60-foot layout, 25 feet in my area now is a 25-foot setback from the center line, 35 feet on the other side. So we discussed this and there's no safety issues and um, there's no visual you know, problems with the sign. So <clears throat> pretty much what he was saying is um, the sign is fine, but if I wanna move it, I can, but right now it's, it, it's just gonna be there. Um, we discussed through East Brookfield and West Brookfield and we also discussed the elementary school fence. The elementary school fence is on state property along with about 90% of the signs going up Route 9 this way. Go through East Brookfield, it, it's, it's most of them on state property too. Um, they try to be proactive and they try to be nice to everybody because they know it's a tight area going through these little towns. But if, if they have to widen the road, then people would have to move their signs back at their cost. Um, he also, we also discussed a lot of fences and other things through Brookfield. Also, Brookfield Motors, um, they're in vile. Everybody's, not everybody, but a good part of the people on Route 9 are on state property. And the state doesn't have a problem with it as long as it's not causing any traffic issues, visual or safety, like I said. So that's where we left it at. <clears throat> so, um, I did a... When I put the sign in, I did discuss somebody with the state, and they said it was as long as it's back a good 10 feet, which mine is 10 foot 6 from the curb. Um, that's also our bylaws. Um, but in some area, as you every 100 foot section on Route 9, it changes. <clears throat> so one discussion came up with someone else in town, and they said possibly the cemetery gate um, could be on state property as well down there. But nobody. That, that gate predates the. That being by the state, I suspect. Well, 1925 is when they did the state layout. This last one. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm just saying state what somebody might have said. That's what someone so, said. Right. I don't know if it's true. I'm just I'm not saying it is. But the other things I've said, uh, you know, are in, are in the state layout. Which I mean. Okay. Did you get? Do you have anything in writing from mm -hmm. them with a conclusion? What they said? No. He just had a report back and and tell him what he found and he and he had his job was to come back and tell me what he found mm -hmm. you know to report back to me so so who did you, so actually who was it that you had the meeting with um was it with this gentleman i don't know if it might have been was it peter Covey? i don't know i have i have the paperwork at the house <clears throat> Could you let us oh, it's not this guy. No, it's not this. No, no, no. This is a, this is another. This guy is from the op engineer on the paper here. Yeah. But that's not who came out. Okay. How about this other one? This Barry Warrior? Um, I don't know. It wasn't him either. 
Could you get in touch maybe with Karen and let Karen know who it is? Yeah. So maybe we can check back with them. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you, you talk about this witch hunt business, Linda. This is just part of it again. <clears throat> I know you don't want to hear it, but it's true. It's not a... Am I right, Clarence? You're right. It's all part of the witch hunt. But well, I don't uh, call it a witch hunt. I call it following the law. Okay, so, so what you're going to do is you're going to cause an inconvenience to everybody. If, if they force me to move my son, you're going to you're gonna cause all this money and trouble with the state and with people's businesses and lives. One of the challenges, though, is that the sign that you're referencing on your property is non-compliant with our bylaw from a standpoint of square footage. Nope, you're wrong again. How am I wrong? Because it is within the square footage. Not according to and, and zoning bylaws. Well, you know, Maybe you guys don't reading, even... You're you, not reading the same zoning bylaw that I am. The problem is you people read what you want to read into the bylaws, Beth. First of all, I applied for the sign. I got a permit, and it was signed off, and I, the, the sign has been the there since... The sign doesn't match the permit, and I get that, and I get <clears> that, I get that there was not the political... Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean the sign doesn't match the permit? Of course sign it does. does not match the permit. Of course it does. Never did. Never did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna solicit from at least one of the members of the zoning board of appeals, if I recall, the original permit on that sign called for it to be uh, not the 48 square feet that it is. That was not what was on that. Building. It's not 48 square feet. Sure, it's 24 each each one. It's an eight it's, by no, it's four it, by eight on each side. That's correct. And so I got two permits for the sign. Eight. 64 square feet. Yeah. It's two separate signs. It's two separate signs, and I had two, and I paid for two separate permits. Yes. It's 64 square feet. Yeah. But each sign is separate. So one side is qualifying as one side, and the other side and is it's qualifying. It's two square feet, and the bylaw allows 16. 16, yeah. Four by eight is the maximum yes, yes. you can have. No, The bylaw says 16, 16 square feet. And it's four by eight. Four, four by eight. 16 is four by four. This town signed off on it. It was approved, and that's it. It's been over 10 years, so. I will see in court. Then, it was, then, it was, then from my understanding, was that the special permit expired? Exactly. No, the special permit. Did, that's again. You're reading the permit wrong. You're reading the. You're reading what you want to read into it. I guess, under, I guess we are because yeah. under cha Chapter uh, 23B, I am recusing myself from further conversation yeah, on this. Right. Mr. Snyder can't be involved. So. so, the sign is in my permit. If you read the permit carefully, it doesn't say I have to go before the town every two years. So like wait a that. second. This topic <clears throat> in the agenda was referenced just this. Correct? Yeah, so so that's we're right. Done. We're done. We're, so that's what's done. that's where the sign stands, and that's the way that okay. it's reading. Right, Dave. We'll, we'll just I'll finish. get you that. I'll get the gentleman's name if you want it. Yes, I would like the gentleman's name and you. And you guys, and and it's talk about using departments and boards against boards. Clarence himself as a select board is using the ZBA board to go after uh, after my sign. This, he's doing this as, as a private citizen. No, he, the town is paying all these attorney bills. This town is going to be spending... He's paying. No, he's no, he is not paying Jeff Blake to go to all these no, court no, cases. So wait a second. So, so, You're wait, wrong, so, Linda. So, You're so wait, wrong. So wait, so wait a second. Wait a second. The town's wait paying wait for this. Wait a second. This. Just, just, this, this has... This discussion does not have any place and in it, open it doesn't, meeting. It doesn't have anything okay. to do with this here. No, but All I was saying that Mr. Snyder did this as a resident of the town of Brookfield. He I didn't appealed, do it. I appealed. He appealed. And the, and the zoning board picked it up. It. Yep. And the zoning board is an independent body. Right, and they picked it up, and they and they uh, and then their taxpayers are going to be paying all these attorney bills. Absolutely. Absolutely, and it's going to multiply two police cruisers when we get done. So. Well, all right. Well, we're done with this because all of that. Okay. I, I, I know you don't want to hear the truth, and you don't want the taxpayers not, to know what's going on in the town. That's not it. We're, we're oh, not it is, Linda. We would, we, would love to, we would love to let them know the truth, but unfortunately, our hands are tied by the fact that it's currently in court. Okay, Beth, that's, and that's what they told. Yeah. That's what they told. <laughs> them. I don't, Beth. I don't think I don't think this board could tell the complete truth if they had to. Okay, Dave. That's enough. The only yeah, I know. I know. I'm talking too much truth. I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. just read what Mass Dot sent to you. I know. I didn't mean to bring. On a, a whole discussion Thank criticizing you, the board of sorts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, if there isn't anything on else on the agenda, I, I would like to move that we adjourn the meeting at uh, 8.05. You have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.